We're recording this butt. We are recording this butt. Hey, oh, 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 hey, hey, oh, hey. Hey. oh, oh. Wing sounds, wing sounds. Three, two, one, bro. everybody i'm mike i'm nick we are the brothers murph and we don't got time because it's time for rapid reviews this is a, a monthly segment we do where we talk about every game we played in that month and very quickly give you our thoughts on them yes as quickly as we can uh, yeah, i don't know about that but we do it quick yeah, yeah quickish yeah we got 40 games lined up for you 40 games 40 were played games. in the month of october pretty good. 2020 pretty good shortest month of the year you know shortest month of the year the longest year of our life yeah you it's know both. It's and all, so we played a lot of stuff things. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start off, Mikey. We finished our My City campaign. Shouts out, wrapped it up. We played the final What'd couple you chapters. I thought My City was fantastic. I thought it was incredible. I thought it was so fun. It's a kind of a we always think of it as like a bite-sized legacy game where you're playing. Yeah, I mean it's just not as a lot of legacy games are like full of like story and all these like yeah, big twists. It, but it's, just it's not. This one's just more like it's just a game that changes over time. Yeah, it's a but I'm fine with that tile laying game. Yeah, that introduces every three games you play will introduce a new chapter, which will introduce some new stuff. Like a lot of legacy games, there's envelopes you're opening, which might give you components, rules, all yeah. sorts of things. It was very fun to be working on this puzzle this polyamino puzzle and having your board change and the things you're trying to go for change it was just an incredible value yeah it was yeah it was great it was just great. such a good time so that is such my city i highly recommend it yes um and we're probably going to get it at some point and play it again maybe wait a year it was and buy it again because it's again. pretty darn cheap it's pretty yeah, darn cheap pretty indeed next up we played four games of karuba we because did. one thing that you'll see on this is a lot of games we played at essen because we are Streaming all during the spiel. Yeah. Um, we streamed uh, three times a day. Once we streamed four times in a day. So we were playing yeah. a lot of games. But one thing we were doing is we were partnered up with Hava and we were doing their Karuba till midnight. So we were playing Karuba every day until midnight. Luckily for us, it was German midnight. So it was like 2 p.m. for us. It's nice for us. But it was Easy. great. So every day we played a game of Karuba with the chat on Hava's live stream. It was super fun. I actually hadn't played Karuba in a while. And we played it four times in a row, and after the fourth time, I was still just like, yep, still great. Still love it. fantastic. Yeah, it's just a fun uh, game that anyone can play along, so long as everyone can kind of see what tiles you need. You could even just draw it all in, so it's kind of a precursor to a roll and ride. Yeah, it is kind of like a, a precursor to a roll and yeah. ride in a weird way. It's so fun. You're just trying to get your ventures to those temples, get some jewels along the way. Yeah, it's easy, great. Karuba is awesome. Shout yeah. out to Hava. We played some Cartographer's Heroes. Yeah. Uh, we did a sponsored stream. Uh, they just ran, uh, Thunderworks Games ran a Kickstarter for a, a sort of, it's a standalone a, expansion, I guess, for yeah. Cartographers. It's just more Cartographer stuff. You can play it all yeah. on its own. You can mix it up with old stuff, whatever. But it's uh, the same kind of flip and write game where you're making a map. Uh, but this one introduces a few things. One, um, it, it changes up some of the cards in terms of what land types and shapes and stuff you're putting onto yeah, your map. which is always cool. Then it introduces the titular heroes, which heroes can help kind of destroy monster spaces and stuff. They are only actually like one square that you fill in, but they have like an area that they will attack. Yeah, exactly. So you can kind of fight monsters, and then they introduce new monsters, which uh, all do slightly they're not they're not static is no no at. yeah there's like a, a dragon where when you get it fully surrounded you get three coins because you basically stole gold from yeah. the dragon or there's a zombie horde which might spread out if you don't contain it super Things the like monsters that. are awesome i was kind of like i could take or leave the heroes to be yeah, completely honest like the heroes were perfect they were not the fine. reason i was playing the monsters were really cool, cool though the monsters are really cool and then they give you new scoring uh cards uh, yes, for each Which is of great. the four kind of categories, and they are really interesting. Yes, they I are. think they really stepped it up. The ones in cartographers are totally fine as well, but this one, like everyone's like, man, this is extra interesting. Yeah, and now you can fun. mix them up with old ones, so you might have a blend of all the want. new scoring. And stuff. then there's new maps too. Like we played yeah. like the yeah. call it volcano map, Slightly where there's a volcano maps. that's yeah. erupting and destroying stuff as it goes out. It's super yeah. super interesting. The map packs I think are going to be really cool. Yeah, which is part of the the Kickstarter. You could get these different um, it's cartographers. It's still yeah. great. So great. Still the best rolling right out there. It's great. Uh, we played Control. This is another game we played uh, during uh, Essen. We did. Uh, we partnered up with Pandasaurus Games. We played a, pan a different Pandasaurus Games every day of the spiel. So we yep. played four. The first one we played was Control. Super interesting. Control is a super interesting, like three D kind of area, area control. control game. You have this like block in the middle, and everyone has their own color blocks, and you're putting these blocks on the thing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the game, you're going to score each face. So you look at the block this way, and you count however many faces are showing. How many of yours can you see? And you're going to be building. Off of the yeah, cube. this You're big three D blob catch, you know, block. Yeah. The cube. Yeah. yeah, it's very Minecraft -y square and all this kind of stuff. It's very cool. And then yeah. you score all the sides, including the top. And then whoever has the most faces showing. 
throughout the whole thing wins. Yeah. And it's very, very quick, but it's very thinky and because it's a whole different puzzle that you just not are you're not used to having to solve, essentially. Yeah. But it's very cool. It's a cool little game. Uh, we also have the designer pop in the chat, which is awesome. Um, yeah, really fun. Yeah, so it's a it's a cool little game. I definitely would suggest uh, trying it out because if you like area control and kind of spatial puzzles, it's a very interesting take on something like that, which is awesome. Yeah, we also played during uh, during SM. We played uh, a Pandemic Hot Zone Hot North America, zone. which is sort of like short pandemic it's it's ever so slightly quicker yeah than normal pandemic because you have uh just the the map is just north america yeah um so you have only three diseases not four you only need four cards not five to cure those diseases things like that it's just sort of simplifies in a in a minor way while keeping the game basically identical it's once yeah. you're playing pandemic it's absolutely the same in every way um, except for the crises. Except for the crises, yeah. which can get kind of shuffled in, which might create like a one-off bad thing that happens or an ongoing effect. And um, for me, Pandemic Hot Zone is fine. Um, I'd rather probably just play a full Pandemic with On the Brink, but those crises were really cool. Oh, they were really cool. I really like those cards coming yeah. up. So um, I think it's like, yeah, if you don't, if you are just going to get like Pandemic without any expansions, you might get Hot Zone because it's quicker and cheaper. Something but it's like, maybe. it's one of those things like if you're like, I don't think it's really necessary to have Pandemic Hot Zone and Pandemic unless you really, really want a shorter version of Pandemic. It's a little more portable, too. A little more portable, which is like, it's great. I mean, it's great because Pandemic is great, but it's not yeah. that different. It's mostly, it's honestly what it's great for is like people who are new to gaming and yeah. they see it at Target and they go, ooh, this seems cool. Pick I'm it up. I'm glad it exists. That's that great. Reason. But if you already play Pandemic, you already have Pandemic, you probably don't need to get it, but it's still great. It's just like not necessary to have both. It's not different enough. Yeah, it's yeah. not like Pandemic Iberia or something like that, which is different enough where I think it's yeah. worth it to have both kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this one is just, it's just Pandemic smaller and quicker, which is great. Yeah. But just, we already have Pandemic, so we're kind of like, cool. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Uh, next we have Sonora, one of my favorite games oh. from the Spiel. This was another of our Pandasaurus games that this we one played. Really good. This is a flick and write, so it incorporates yes. dexterity and then roll and write type puzzles so. that you're doing. And so the first phase of every round, you are flicking one of your five discs, valued one to five, into this four little board, kind of like a little a square crokinole board that have four regions. And based on where your discs end up. It's going to relate to one of four regions on your board that you're drawing yes. stuff in. So you might want to have a bunch in one region because you're really trying to focus on this area or uh, the mud cracks area and you're trying to get a bunch over there. And they all work a little bit differently. One, you're trying to hex off boxes, bam, bam, bam. Uh, another one, you're trying to get a bunch of value and you're basically trying to create these pathways which enclose cacti and stuff. This other one, you are trying to... For every value, you're gonna go. You're gonna x off spots and then circle whatever the last. Yeah, you're one going is. down like you're a creek to, bed. Yeah, you're trying to trying to get onto the right spots and x off the other ones because you're not gonna score those points. Yeah, so they all work differently. And yeah. there's all these bonuses and combos you. The can bonuses get. you get to do this and get to do this oh, and get to do great. this. It's, it's very satisfying. if you like bonusy combo y Big like time. kind of fleet the dice game type roll and rights where you just constantly you getting more and more that stuff. That. Yeah, it's real good. And then on top of that, it's and then you got a dexterity. It's flicking, and that's how you get the yeah. stuff. It's such a cool idea that really works. Yeah. I really like it. It kind of gives you the randomness of like dice rolls because you might you might mess up a thing or someone hits your 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 disc elsewhere. But then also you can pull off a little bit of skill, so you have some ability to control what yeah. you're doing and where you go. So it's yeah, really yeah. Cool. You're like, I need to go over here. I'm gonna flick over it's here. It may not be fun. perfect. You might flick too hard or something, but it's like it's nice being able to control that more so than just a yeah. card flip. Or a dice roll. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Sonora was really fun. It was really uh, cool take on a roll and write. Yeah. Flick and write. You played a little Seven Wonders duo. Oh, man, I did. I got beat bad twice. Yeah. But it's okay. The first game I got militarized upon. Ooh. You know how that goes. And then the next time I played, I was like, I'm going to militarize on the guy who militarized upon me. But then I didn't have quite enough military to get it done. So I got smashed in points. I got like, <laughs> like. 70 to 30, like bad. Wow. Because the military That's was what my you're doing, only yeah. path to victory. So. Didn't go so well. It's high risk, high reward kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Seven Wonders Duel continues to be a fantastic, one of the best two player games of all time. Seven Wonders Duel is one of those things so where good. I always think I don't like it until it's I play so it. Good. I know until I play it, and then I play it. And I'm like, oh no, this is outstanding, and I always think I don't it's like it. I don't know why. Game of all time, man, for a good reason. It's so yeah. Fantastic. I don't know it's for whatever reason, but I do yeah. like it. I just always think I don't. Yep. Play uh, that over Seven Wonders, boom. So. A little abandon all artichokes. Abandon all artichokes. Game game. It's sort of uh, it's a deck wrecking game. It's a little card it's a game. Cool it's actually really fun. So you start off with a hand of ten artichoke cards, and you don't want artichoke cards. They don't do anything. They're just in the way. Just the whole way. goal is to at the end of your turn draw five new cards and have no artichokes. If you can manage to do that, you win. 
Um, and so every turn you're going to be getting a vegetable card. There's 10 different types of vegetables. I think they all have different powers yep. and stuff. And they're basically going to help you discard artichokes, pass cards around, mess with your opponents and stuff. And it's this deck building game where you're ultimately trying to get rid of all your artichokes so that you can draw a fresh hand with no artichokes. Yeah, and that's how you win, right? Really fun, yeah. really fun, um, clever way to do a deck building game. Yeah. And it's quick and short and fun. Love it. And adorable. Yeah. Love it. It's kind of the games are great. Yeah, I, yeah. I, we didn't get a chance to try it, but I want to so play it. We also played Gods of Dinosaurs, another Pandasaurus game um, that we played during S, and this one was Man. very, very, very fun. It's another that's spatial destroyed. puzzle. This one is, yeah, I was Hard. apparently, de I was good at this game, I don't know why. But this is a game where you are essentially building out um, like a hexagonal continent kind of thing. Yeah. And you have all these like two, two like hex tiles. Hexagonal dominoes. Yeah, hex yeah, kind of exactly, you're right. And they all have different land types on them, sometimes the same, sometimes different, sometimes uh, like mountains and stuff like that. And you're basically putting it in there and you're getting different animals. So you're getting different prey animals. You can get mice, you can get frogs, or you can get uh, rabbits. rabbits. So you get those prey animals and then other tiles will give you predators. You can get tigers or you can get eagles. And then what you're trying to do essentially, and, and then so, and then as all the tiles are in these columns and whenever you take out the column, take out all the tiles in that column, whatever animals in that column well, activate. activates. So yeah. if it's like you activate your rabbits, all of your rabbits that have an extra space that they can go to will populate. They'll multiply. Exactly. Like or if you do. activate one of your predators, your predators will then go and eat the prey, but the tigers move in a different way than the, than the eagles, so you have to set them up in the right way. Yeah. And the only way the tigers and the eagles can populate is if they eat prey. Yeah. So then you can populate them, and then there's dinosaurs. You start off with a dinosaur, you can get some more. When the dinosaurs activate, they get eggs, which are points, if they eat predators. Yeah. And so you have to like... It's all about balancing your ecosystem. Yeah, you're like building out this big hexagonal thing, and then on top of that, you're trying to set up your prey so your predators can eat them to populate, and then your so that your dinosaur can reach them and eat them to get eggs. But the dinosaurs start on a mountain, it has to end on a mountain. So you yeah. have to make so sure your like predators rules about how they are work. close enough to them where they can go around and get them because they have limited. And it's just this puzzle that's tough and fun. Really, really fun. Great look to it. Yeah. Interesting, weird game, but just a cool game where you're kind of like setting everything up in a big spatial puzzle. And it's really, really fun. It's awesome. It's really cool. It's, 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 very light and bright looking, but uh, and accessible, but like yes, you can sure. get pretty puzzly with it yeah. and probably try to get very clever, I imagine, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, it was really fun, Gods of Dinosaurs. Yeah. Liked it a lot. Uh, during our Panda uh, streams and stuff, we played a little bit of Illusion because uh, it's a Wolfgang Warsh game that's carried by Panda over here yeah. in the States. And it's another game similar to The Mind where it's like, it's so simple, it makes me angry. Yeah. It's just a game where there are going to be colors in shapes on cards. Uh, and your goal is if, say, we're scoring red, uh, if you draw a card and it has red on it, you're going to see, like, does this card have more red or less red than the cards that are already on the table? And you're trying to put it into the timeline, essentially. So if you think, like, this one has no red, this one has a lot of red, this one's sort of middle, I'm going to drop it in the middle. And then you can either play a card or challenge. If you don't yeah. think that the order is correct, meaning that it always goes up from less red to more red and there's percentages on the back... You can challenge, and if you're right, then you collect that card. If you're wrong, that the person that played before gets that card. And you're just trying to collect those three cards. Yeah. But it creates this really fun thing about how our eyes work and how we perceive things. Man, it because, messes your head, yeah. Yeah, because it'll be like those shapes will be familiar. They'll be like these big cylinders, but they're all sort of in front and stacked on top of each other. So you might see a giant red cylinder, and there's things in front of it. So in your head, you're like, you're going to fill in. The rest say, like, this whole thing is red. You're like, no, but most of it's covered up. So it's actually only a very little amount the of red. The percentage that's so on the card is a lot less than you think, even yeah. though your mind is... Because it's trying to fill in it's the It's filling in everything. And it's, so it messes with you. Yeah, it's and really it's cool. really and good. And that's like literally the whole game. That's it's it. like, it doesn't need to be more than that. It's so Little tiny simple. card deck cards yeah. carry around with you. It's great. Illusion's awesome. Yeah, it's really fun. Anyway, you played Railroad Inc. I did play Railroad Inc. I played... Uh, I, I, like, I, I, come, I came you, in you and came like, in and hung out for a bit. Yeah. yeah I played Railroad Inc. I, I played with our patrons. Uh, if you don't know, we sometimes we'll play games with you our patrons. You can be a patron play with us today. Hey! Yeah, we'll play against our patrons. So I wanted to play Railroad Inc. Because that's a game that can house... We like to play a lot Games, games that can house as many people as possible. Yeah. That way we can play with more people. And so, played Railroad Inc. Uh, played, I ran it on Tabletopia, and then everyone else can play kind of on their own um, with us. And it was really, really fun. Uh, played um, a couple quick games, and and yeah, it's Railroad Inc. is a blast. It's just like the kind of epitome of a roll and write where you are 
your roll out where you get everyone, you roll out these four die, everyone has to use all four of those dice yeah, and you just have to make it work with what's rolled. Yeah. There's no dice mitigation. There's nothing, you gotta make it work and you're essentially trying There's to make networks. you can use and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, and that's about it. Um, you're essentially trying to make uh, routes of railroads and highways and that's it. And you're trying to connect them to the edge of the board as many times as possible. And that's it, but it's just like you, like I, you get halfway through the game and you start needing specific stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you need that to be rolled and of course it doesn't get rolled. And so it's just that. very, very fun. As in terms of a tough, like brutal roll and write where like you just got to make it work with what you got. It's a great one. Railroading's awesome. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's wonderful. I like it a lot. Super good. We played, uh, I think, my favorite game from uh, Essen Spiel from CG's The Lost Ruins of Arnok. That was my favorite Arnak. game, too. Um, it's a super cool game where you are adventurers, uh, or archaeologists, rather, um, adventuring around and discovering dig sites and stuff. You're looking for this, like, lost temple. Uh, and it's just a really cool... Um, deck building ish game where you are placing archaeologists out at dig sites and you're trying to get resources which you can then turn in to get other resources you can buy items you can use your exploration to discover artifacts which are cards that will then go into your deck and be played um, you can research and everything is basically it's all mechanical in its way but with a beautiful board but everything gives you some some things that you can then spend on these things over here and so you're really trying to think of like how can I be the most efficient yeah. With the actions I have. How can I get the most stuff, the right stuff, which gets me over here, which gives me that stuff, which gets me over here to get that stuff. And it's yeah. about like, how do you stretch your round out as far as you can yeah. and be as efficient as you can? Yeah. And it's a great puzzle to have to put together. And it looks amazing. As of right now, it might be my favorite game of the year. Yeah. It definitely it's is right top. It's definitely I mean, it's top right three for me. I, I Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's, it's really so fun. good. Yeah, it's incredible. It's like it was like probably the hottest game of Essen and, and rightfully so yeah. in our opinion. It's so it's good. It's really good. It deserves its hype. It's it's just it looks great and it's a just really well yeah, designed. Really game. fun game. Yeah. Real oh god, it's so good. Lost Runes, check it out. I played Orchard, a little solitaire game. A nine card solitaire game. This is something that I think uh I saw someone, maybe Liz on the Dice Tower talk about. Mm. Uh, this game when it was like on Kickstarter, I think maybe, and it's like literally a, a, a small game that has 18 cards. You'll only play nine of them in a game, and all you're doing is they have on each card six plant types. There's there's uh, <laughs> purple, red, and yellow, or like pears, apples, and blueberries, or something. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is you're placing a card, and you can put it any which way you want. And then on your next card, you have to overlap at least one of the six symbols that are beneath it. And the more you can overlap, the better, because if you do that, you start putting dice down, which mm. is mean like these trees are harvesting, you know, they're, they're producing. Yeah. And then if you pop it down, you have a one on a blueberry. And then if I can manage to cover the blueberry again, the one becomes a three, then a six, then a 10. And so if you can manage to get these things stacked up nicely, then you get um, more and more points. And But okay. you can't cover up, I can't cover up a, a yellow with a red. It has to match. But you can overhang and hang stuff off. So you're just trying to build this thing. It's just like that's all it literally is. Is like you yep. play nine cards and then score it. And it's just a puzzle of trying to build things the most efficient way possible. And I was interested in it because like that's kind of cool. Like I don't think I'd ever need to buy that. But then it popped up on Tabletopia. I was like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I played it. I was like, that's fun. I definitely don't need to buy it. But it's fun. Hey, cool. Well, I'm that puzzle it takes five minutes. What fun. Yeah. You played another game with Tekenu. Oh, I played a couple games with Tekenu back to back. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. The first game I played, played with my buddy Crook was atrocious, embarrassingly bad. Just awful. That's a hard game, man. It's really hard. It's really hard. So you only have 16 turns. It's so tight. That and game so, is so hard. The second game we played, I played much better. I still lost uh, decently, but it was one of those things where if I had seen a card that I could have gotten, I, could, I probably could have won. So I yeah. played a better game, but it's a fantastic, tight game where um, you are drafting these dice and you are either drafting the dice to do one of six god actions and stuff, which you're basically building up stuff and, and doing things, or you can use a die to produce resources, and that's gonna be based on the color of the die. Um, and it's 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 just, it's everything's tight. You don't have a ton yeah. of anything. You don't have much time. I talked about it in my Tekenu vs. Teotihuacan video. It's just tight. You're just like, it's, there's no time for anything. Yeah. And um, But I really enjoy it though. I enjoy like, 
the tension. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah, a yeah. good one. It's great. It's great. It's it's, really it's, it's tough. I need to play it. You've played it a couple more times than I have. So I need good. to play it again because I, I really, really liked it. It's hard though, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also played uh, Alien Frontiers again. We're in the mic section. We're in the mic section yeah. right now. Uh, play all these with my buddy Crook. <laughs> um, Alien Mike Frontiers. Mike plays more games with me, yeah. I do, I do. I'm just more down to play them digitally. Yeah, than that's really what it comes down to. Um, uh, Alien Frontiers is a dice placement game, so you're going to roll out your dice on your turn, which are your ships, and you can place them onto different kind of uh, action spaces to make use of those actions. And you're trying to get these little colonies built out. Um, and it was cool. Like the first time I played it, I was like, that's fine. Then I played it again. I was like, oh, this is decent, man. Like I, I really understand like why it has gotten a bunch of expansions yeah. and stuff. Like it's a cool game because you're just trying to build up and get these resources. You can get like fuel and ore and you use that to build your colonies. And if you get a colony out into a, an area on the planet, you get like a special power and all the powers are really powerful. Yeah. But you only have it if you have more colonies in that section than anyone else. So there's a tie you lose the ability to that power. Hmm. Um, and you're trying to play out all your colonies and, and the score is always going up and down based off of the kind of status of the game in that moment. So hmm. it's kind of interesting where the game ends. You know exactly where everyone is. You either have won or not. Because yeah. there's no like end game scoring or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Every time you get something that gives you a point, you immediately score that point. If you lose that thing that gave you that point, you go back down. Yeah, yeah. So I always like that. It's really you, interesting. You gain stuff, you get it, but if you lose that, uh, we played... Uh, might come up with this one, but Sanctum's kind of like that. You can yeah, gain Sanctum. and lose stuff, which is cool. Sanctum's also really good. We did play it this month. Yeah, indeed. I oh, would play Chai. Chai was yeah. requested that we play it on our stream. Chai is great. It is. It's just great. It's just just by it's just get charming. Some, it's get some chill. It's a great. It's a great. We, we're thinking about doing a, a top ten like relaxing games. I think yeah. Chai is a, a one because yeah. it's just like it's just kind of like you're. It doesn't take up hardly any of your brain space because it's just it's such a simple game in terms of there's three types it's of actions to you look can do. At, You're only gonna do just, two of those actions very often. Yeah. It's pretty as all get out. It's nicely produced, really well produced. We have the deluxe version to be fair, but even the regular is just oh, a it's very still nice gorgeous. Production. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Chai is great. Yeah, I mean, Chai's it's fantastic. it's great. It's a great way to get people into board games. They like tea. They like just good looking, bright games. It's like, hey, let's play this cool game Chai, and it's got because mm -hmm. it's got really cool decisions and the the way the market with the tea tokens work. I think is super clever and cool, and um and I was just like, it's just. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a great game. I think it's a wonderful game to get people in the hobby because it's like, yeah, it just works. It just works, and it's nice. It's fantastic. Nice. You played uh, uh, probably a bad game. Uh, no, I got Clever Hawk Dry on probably the phone, bad. which is the third in the That's So Clever or Gone Show Clever the, games. The bad game series. It's the third one. No, man, Clever Hawk Dry is great. Call it the trash it's series. It's fantastic. All of the That's So Clever games are good. Uh, they, what they, is different about this one? The puzzles, the way that things oh, score is all different. different. Are things different colors? And there's like yeah, blue slightly stuff different colors. Oh my gosh. Ever so slightly different Whoa. colors. But they are different challenges. I played a bunch of it right when Wait, I got it. It's been a little different while. challenges? Yeah. That's crazy. Now you have to be three times as clever what? To, to score <laughs> points or else you're not getting anywhere. You gotta be smarter and smarter. Uh, it's the Sorry, same I'll type of game. Where you're rolling out dice and then you're choosing dice to go into different areas and the color of the die pertains to each of these different puzzles. And um, this one had really interesting puzzles. I yeah. enjoy, I appreciated it. I can see you guys. I can see you out there. Um, I really liked it a lot. Um, both Doppelt So Clever and then Clever Hawk Drive, the second and third one, I haven't I didn't I haven't been You haven't gone quite as deep. No, and I think You were deep into Gonch and Clever. Yeah, I played so much Gonch and Clever on the Do you think that burned you out on the next two? I think so, a little bit. That's where fair. like the other two I really enjoyed, yeah. but I just can't play it. I played Gonch and Clever hundreds of times. And I, I just did and I I played Clever Hawk Drive many times. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like I just don't have the steam to do it over and over again. That's you know? fair. But I'm glad I have them all because once in a while I'm like, oh, I want to do this and play it. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, I know people like get mad when we say this, but I'm like, do not get those games physically. Get them on the phone. Get them on it's the phone. Better on the phone. They're app games. They're they they are like they're, they're app small games. enough. Like that does not need to be a board game to me. Just get it on the phone. Yep. Get on the phone. I think they make Indeed. them exactly for yeah. the phone. It's a numbers says. game. Just get on the phone. Bam. Play rock drafts. Good. We played uh, Code Names Do It. I think we played the same night we played uh, Chai. We used to rip. I think yeah. It was the same day. Code Names Do It is great. It's it's a great it version is. of Code Names. Played in a while. Yeah, we hadn't played it in a while, yeah. and it's such a fun game of just like. It's a two-player version of Codenames Co-op, which is such a cool idea. And yeah, and you're just trying to like, trying to guess the words while not trying to guess your assassin. You each have, I think it's, uh, what is it? Nine unique words. And then there's like six words that overlap or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is. But nonetheless, it's um, six and then three. Six, we each have six individual words, three that overlap to make yes, nine words each total. 
Uh, yes, yes, exactly. So it's really, really fun though, and you really kind of get to deep dive into each other's brains, especially if you're playing like someone like Mike and I, who we knew we know each other very we well. Reference level. We understand each other's references. If I say this, Mike understands that this is what I'm saying, which is I think one of the issues with code names is people get too deep into that kind of stuff with normal code names. But with code names duet, I feel like it lends to that, which is a yeah. good thing. Because it's just you and one other person. Yeah, nice. Whereas when you're trying to throw out like references, but you're playing on a team with like four other people, Some people it gets get it, confusing. Some don't get the joke, and then they, you yeah, know, yeah. Whereas this like really lends to, and I think it's outstanding. Uh, I love Codem's duet. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we played a game of Disney Villainous. We cosplayed for it. We played Cruella de Vil versus Yzma with perfect cosplay. Yeah, Yzma. Um, perfect cosplay. Perfect cosplay is great. Definitely gonna see a picture. Of I'm that. sure. I'll, I'll, I'll find a picture of that. Right yeah. Perfect cosplay. A perfect cosplay. Uh, no, it's fun. I haven't played Disney Villainous in a very. You had. I've had it at my place because my roommates really like yeah. it, and so I've been having it at my place because uh, we've been playing a little bit. But uh, we brought it back for yeah. this, and um, yeah, it's great. It's really fun. I continue to think it's like one of the better ideas for a game ever. Like the fact that you can have all these Disney villains are now Marvel. Yeah. Um, and so I just love it because like all the art on the cards is Disney and stuff. It's just really nice and fun. Um, I wish the game was slightly better. It's not bad. <laughs> no, exactly. But it's just like every time we're playing, I'm always just like, this game is just a little too long with a little too little going on. Yeah. But I really love the packaging yeah. so much. I love the art. I want to continue to collect them because the art and stuff is so cool. And there's like Pete and it's like black and white. I'm like, that's so awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like unmatched in that way where I just get excited for a new pack because I just want to see all the stuff. Yeah. I don't like... It's a bummer because... I'm never going to play it all the time because I'm just like, the game isn't interesting enough yeah, to play a time. It's one of those things so where cool. I, the game is, is good. It could be great, yes, it but it's not, not. It's and not that's great. the issue. Is I good. think with the with the taking away just like the theme, to, we're talking about just mechanics of the game. Yeah, it's just a little bit too long. There's not quite enough going on, um, but it's so cool because everyone has a different. But wind it's condition. but the abstract, like, cool. yeah, it's like puppies. I'm like, it's so cool. it's so cool. It's just, and I don't even know what to say. Like, what this just, is what you could do to make it better. I maybe wish it was a little more involved or something. Maybe I don't, I don't know. know, but yeah, but it's it's a good, good game. It's, supposed to be. Yeah. it's not great, and I wish it was because I think, like you said, the packaging, the theming, the fact that it's asymmetric, all stuff is so so good. Yeah, and it's a good game. Yeah, what they said, we have all of the villainous stuff. Yeah, we have it all. So it's like I'll do just those meeples. I love the yeah, abstract meeples. I know it's so cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, I played Encore or Nakma, which is yeah. another um, roll right. right, really abstract. Just throwing down, rolling dice, and they have colors and numbers, and you have to choose one of the combinations. You roll two color dice, two number dice, and you have to choose the red and the four, and then you're ticking off boxes into a thing, and like it's so it's a very dry roll and write. Um, but Ross was streaming it, and I have the app for Knock Mall, and you can just basically make a digital score yep. pad for yourself. And so I was able to play along That's as great. he was rolling the dice. It was fantastic. I did okay. Actually, had a decent game for not having played in a while, but it's another great one. I really like those rolling rights. I don't mind the 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 Gonchun clevers and stuff. I, I like them. I just like the puzzle of doing. Yeah. It. I have a bunch. I have quicks and stuff. I don't mind them at all. Um, so Encore was really fun. I hadn't yeah. played it in quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I played Everdell. Yeah, Everdell. Rip. Um, we had started a game, my buddy Crook and I, and then it got interrupted, so we played it um, uh, and kind of finally got to play and it was just always good it's always good it's always we played good. the weirdest game ever of it though weird one farm That's came right. out the entire game and i snagged it and both of us sort of like our whole life was hinging on having a farm yeah and I there's the so many cards in that game where if you have a farm it yeah. gets way worse yeah. yeah yeah it's it's uh everdell's great i love it it's simple it's not we still we we have the pro Brook expansion i do want to try the other two expansions yeah it's Definitely. it's great. I mean, even just the base game alone, I think it's I think it's outstanding. Again, it's not like it's, it's not the deepest game ever. It's not the most innovative game it's ever. But like, it's easy to learn and play, and it's, it's fun. fun combos. It's yeah. about that kind of similar to Lost Ruins, where you're just trying to stretch your round out as yeah. much as you can, be as efficient as you can. There's a lot of great stuff going on. I think Everdell's incredible. Yeah, I think it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, I played Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, my roommate and I oh. picked it back up. We hadn't played in a couple weeks um, just because we've been busy. Um, and so he wanted to play it this last weekend, and so we played uh, a game on Sunday, but that's will be in November's um, Rapid Reviews. Oh, yeah. But nonetheless, we played a game, and so we had been working our way through the tutorial. So the tutorial in Jaws the Lion... The first is five. It's scenarios. five, yeah. yeah. So we just did the fourth scenario, 
And then on Sunday, we did the fifth scenario. But it just continues to be great. It's Gloomhaven. We like Gloomhaven a lot. Mm -hmm. It's great. If you want to try out Gloomhaven, get Jaws and the Lion. Because Gloomhaven is very big, very expensive. We yeah. think very worth it. But nonetheless, Jaws and the Lion is a lot cheaper. And it's still 25 scenarios. And it teaches you the game so, so well. The way, way he does it. it. Yeah. So well done. And it's, it's just fun. And the new characters, the characters that we're playing are really, really fun. Especially now, it's like... Because Gloomhaven, I talked about in a metagame minute a while ago of like games that you legitimately get better at. And I said Gloomhaven was one of them. Yeah. Because so much of Gloomhaven is like you just start to learn... Like, you understand what all your cards do. Yeah. But you just start getting better at making those cards work together. And we're starting yeah. to get to that point. You start doing some cool moves. Yeah, you're starting to get to that point where like you're three, four, five, six games in with that character. And all of a sudden you're like... Okay, okay. And the new characters are really cool and really fun. That's and awesome. so, really having a good time. Uh, Gloomhaven's great. Jaws Lion is great as well. I uh, like it a lot. I'm really enjoying playing it with my roommate. That's awesome. We played a game of Five Tribes. Yeah. We played Five Tribes in forever. It had been a minute. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I freaking good. love that game. Yeah. I love that game. And every time we play, I'm always like, I love this game. And then we don't play it for a long time. It's just a product of having 200 games, but it's just like, yeah. I'm always like, God, I wish we played this more. It's so good. It's incredible. I think it's my favorite Bruno Catala game for sure. You think so? I don't, what would beat it? I don't know. I have to look around, but something. Yeah. My favorite Bruno Catala game. We'll I see in our top 100, I guess, what your favorite Bruno Catala game is. I guess, is. yeah. It'll be officially ranked soon. We'll we're we're going to start filming our top 100, which will come out in November. Um, yeah. And so, so you'll see them all ranked if they make my list at all, but that yeah. one will be on my list. Yeah, Five, five Tribes, tribes is, is it's great. It's the Moncala game where you're picking up and dropping off yeah. meeples as you go, and then it's all about the color of the meeple will dictate uh, what a part you do, of your action, yeah. and then the space that you pick your meeples up will do something. It's just so cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's like... It feels it's very unique. It's very game. cool. Yeah, yeah the way good. that you get your actions and stuff. I was like, that's just really neat. Yeah, it's um, rad. I'd like to get the good. other expansion at some point. Same. Just yeah, to fill we it have, out. We have yeah. the artisans one, but not yeah. the other one. Yeah. We played Isle of Cats. We played a remote version which of Isle of so Cats. Fun. One of our um, uh, followers on Twitch. You can turn in a certain amount of channel points, which you get from watching us, yeah. uh, to make us play a game. Like essentially to choose a game for us. Yep. Someone wanted us to play the remote version of Isle of Cats, and it is. Really interesting and fun. Yeah, it basically turns it into a roll and write. Yeah, so more or less. All you need, and this is something that that um, City of Games made. They did it themselves. Yeah, um, it's not like a, it's like a BGG yeah, variant. which is like extra cool. So yeah. they, they basically, if one person has the game, physically has the co a copy of Isle of Cats, and they can have a camera or something like that. Infinite yeah. amount of people can play yep. because everyone else, including the person who owns the game, is going to have a player sheet. And basically, uh, you're going to set up this kind of grid of cards and cats. Yeah. And those are going to be what's available. And you're going to choose a row of that, which is going to have three items. It's going to have a mix of cards and cats, or just cats, uh, depending on which row you choose. And you're going to be putting those things, drawing them in, and then you know creating something to say, this is a blue cat. You can either do it texture, uh, make it different texturally, yeah. or use colored pens, or whatever. Um, and, and you basically turn it into a roll and write. And there's certain lesson cards, and everything is sort of optimized... For that kind, kind of, of like thing, a yeah. solo experience, and then you just kind of compare your scores. It was so fun. I thought it worked beautifully. It's, so it much works. That we laminated the sheets, and we was like, we kept them in Isle of Cats yeah, because sometimes we don't want to set up the whole thing. We're just like, we'll just play yeah, this. If I was playing a game with you, it's like, I'll play the remote edition. Yeah. I think it's super fun. I think it's great because it's, it's still, still very, Isle very Isle of Cats. Yeah, very much. It's so. different in some ways, but it's still super cool. It's still 80, 85% Isle of Cats. Yeah. It's just and it's sort like, of, cool. It's yeah. great. It's and, and shout out to uh, City Games, right? City yeah. Games, City Games for doing that because I mean, like they did it. I think because of the pandemic and stuff like that. And it's like, man, so what cool. a cool idea! What a cool yeah. thing to do. We played lanterns. We uh, Karen chose I played lanterns. lanterns straight, like straight up lanterns in forever. It was fun. I, I lanterns is great. It's it's a game that it like one of the first games we kind of got in the beginning of like us starting Isn't to buy really games. Nice. Yeah, and just like, yeah, I don't know. Lanterns is very. To me, it feels it's very zen. And I understand that it could not be that for some people, but it's just you're you're playing out tiles, and then you're playing out tiles. Tiles will have four different lanterns, or sometimes the same lanterns. But basically, any lantern that's pointing at you when you put that tile out there, you'll then get that color of lantern cards. You're turning in those lantern cards to get points. The cool thing about lanterns is you're always engaged because mm -hmm. every time a tile gets put out, everyone gets a card. So if I put out here, it's got green, red, blue, and yellow. Mike's here. I'll get green. Mike will get blue. Yeah. Carol will get red, and then yellow will get nothing. Or other I want to talk there. about that. I think it's cool. Maybe I'll do a metagame minute about it. About just games that 
use your position at the table as a factor yeah. in the game. It's really cool. It is know. very cool. No, I, I, I totally agree. There's a few instances I've thought of recently. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And we play Lantern. It's great. It's still great. I still love it. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Lantern is awesome. It lives in our collection for a reason. We got to try uh, Last Bastion, yes. which I didn't know until we like literally were learning to play that it is a, a like a reskin of Ghost Stories. Yeah, which we liked. Yeah, yeah which we liked. Um, uh, not ever enough to get it because it's just hard and stuff. So Last Bastion is very much the same game where you have a, a three by three grid and you uh, are moving your characters onto different spaces, which will give you different actions you can do. And you're sort of trying to fend off uh, these baddies that are coming from different directions on the board and stuff. Um, and uh, it's just a hard co-op experience. Yeah. Um, and you basically can go and throw down with a, with a monster or whatever, and you roll some dice to try to take them out. You're trying to roll specific things. Uh, they need certain things to be overcome. Yeah. Essentially, and you can set up some kind of traps and stuff. It was a cool game. Um, it's a cool. Game. It's still a game that, like, I don't need to have this. No, game. Don't need I to would have love it, to play it, was, it again. Yeah. but like, it's one of those. It's kind of like Ghost Stories. We're kind of like, cool. This is really fun. It's down a really to play cool it. Idea, at other yeah. people's plays, down to play at conventions, or whatever. But like, I still don't need it. But yeah. I, I still enjoy it. It's yeah. still a fun hard co-op. Yeah, it was a fun hard co-op. Um, it was a really cool time to play. Um, and I'd happily play it like at a con. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. Last Bastion's cool. Really neat. Uh, when we played Illusion during that Pandasaurus stream, uh, we also played The Mind real quick. For the first time in a long time. First time in a long time. Uh, another Wolken Wash game for, that's carried by Pandasaurus. Yep. Um, and again, very small box game. This is a game where you have a deck of cards that are 1 through 100. Everyone gets a card, and you have to, without speaking, put them down in numerical order. Yeah, and just then ascending. You can't put something out of place, essentially. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then if you pass that one, then you shuffle it up again, and then each person gets two cards, and you have to put them in ascending order. Pass that, you get three cards, and you just go up and then you get until 12. And it's very hard. It's very fun. I, I like the mind a lot, but we play a version of the mind that... I really enjoy where we talk constantly, but mm -hmm. you have to talk in weird scenarios. So one thing we always do, kind of our go-to is like, where are you at in the grocery store? Where are you at in the grocery store? And that's kind of, because the mind is all about just staring at each other until you think it's your yeah, time to go. It out. So we kind of do the same thing. We just talk about it. We're like, you're like, I'm in bread. Where are you? Yeah. It's and like, oh, well, you would dude, think I'm it would make it easier, but the way we do it doesn't make it easier. Yeah. It makes it just as hard, if not harder, because Mike and I are both agents of chaos, so we're both just like, like we did one, we're talking about like going through a heist, one was like, we started <laughs> we started letting the, the chat choose. Determine our, our scenario. Yeah, yeah, choose where we were. We had one, we were, we were on a camping trip, one, we were yeah. on a heist, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff, so you're like, dude, like, I'm in the vault. But the thing is, it's one of the things you're like, but like, I know where I mean that is, yeah, but, but I don't know if you if, interpret that the same to way. Me, that's the end of the heist. But what, what's the first thing you do? Uh -huh. You know, and so that's one of the things. And so it makes it really, really fun. We love playing the mind that way. Uh, I think the mind's great. A lot of people are like on the mind. I'm like, it's, it's great. Fantastic. It's great. I think it's very fun. It's exactly what it is. People like, do the whole like, it's not a board game. And I'm like, who cares? gives a shit? <laughs> it's like, it's just what it is. Let it be what it is. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. I got to play a little bit of Targi. I played with uh, Handsome Nate. Ooh. Um, tall drink of tall, water. He's a tall mm. glass of freaking juice, man. Tall glass of guava juice. <laughs> Uh, I got to play with my friend Nate, uh, which is kind of late night. Uh, uh, BGA, yeah? Yeah, I played a little BGA. It's pretty good on BGA. It does work pretty I'm good on BGA. I'm more and more into Board Game Arena all Here's the Here's the thing. I am starting to get more and more in Board Game Arena. Really I don't well. I don't it want to. like hot trash. Not, but it's like, it's fine, but it functions It's really very well. good at what it you does. Can, the main thing about this, not to break the... You can hover over any card, it just tells you all about yes. it. And I'm like, that's amazing. And you can't make a wrong play because it won't let you do yeah, that. It is, like, that's so useful. It is very good at what it does. <laughs> it's very automated, yeah. Anyway. My main problem with BG at this point is I don't like the scoring. It just goes <laughs> and your score is done. I'm like, there's no fanfare. No, yeah. dude, it's like, like oh. I need I need a little bit more. But we played it on um we played it on uh BGA uh Board Game and, Arena, folks. Board Game Arena, yeah. And it was it was great. I, I like I like Targi a lot. Targi is a game that like, really I solid. fundamentally don't understand how no one else has taken that idea in terms of where there's You're a right, grid yeah. there's a grid of cards around the border there's cards in, in the middle and you put your targi in one of the spots on the edge of the thing and you put your other one on the edge and another one on the edge and then where they intersect you get those cards in the middle and it's such a cool way to go about getting stuff getting it's cards really it's kind of like quadropolis with the um you're oh, pointing the, uh, at stuff to get the tiles, yeah, and no one yeah. else has used that. And I'm like, I why? Know. This is so smart. And it's like, 
Target is the same thing. We're like, I don't understand why no one else has used this, but it's great. It's very in your face, and you're blocking each other and blocking each other out while trying to get some stuff. It was really, really fun. I love Target. I really want to try the expansion. Me too. Um, I'm really ready for the expansion. Yeah, I really I like think the expansion. it's going to pump a lot of new life. Yeah, and I, I love Target. It's great. It's really awesome. uh, quick shout out. Uh, Nate is a uh, game designer, and so we, after that, we actually played one of his designs, the oh. teacher one. Yeah, it's cool. Which I don't know if it has oh, a name you know, yet. It's, it's probably changed. But I didn't add it to this. We've actually played 41 games this month because I we played this game, nice. and I'd say it's really coming along. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it's That's really really fun. Cool. So we played. It's, it's a cool all game. About getting the right students in the right configuration. Yeah. and he's a teacher, so it. It's about organizing a classroom. Life. If you put a kid here, it's going to automatically affect all the kids around them. So yeah. it might flip them over to a worse side. And so it's very, very puzzly, very fun, though. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, it was it was good. So we also played that afterwards, which was nice. great. 41 games. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, we uh, played Nations of Dice Game. Yeah, you've been trying, trying to get me to play for yeah. a while. Yeah. Just, you know, I didn't want to play. No, it's not true. I wanted to play. Nations of the Dice Game. Shout out to Rainer for uh, gifting that game. Shout we out. appreciate you, man. Uh, we played with the Unrest expansion, which is... Really, I, I would never want to play without it. No, no, no. Having only played that, yeah. yeah. So the Unrest Nations Dice game is a is a dice version of Nations. Where I've talked to many rapid reviews, and it's incredibly quick. Yes, very, very fillery. fast. And the uh, Unrest expansion, the main thing it gives you, it gives you new types of un Unrest dice, but it gives you uh, asymmetric kind of uh, yeah, yeah. player board. So you might start with different types of dice, or you might start with an extra token to use. So it will give you just a little bit of a different thing that you do. And that right there, I'm like, great. Now, right. this is still very much like a filler game, yep. but we all have a slightly different thing that we can do. And then the rest is just like getting, rolling out some stuff, getting some gold or stone, and you can try to complete world wonders. All the th things of like a Civ game you'd see, but just like in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Um, it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really fun. fun. Yeah, right? I liked it a lot. It was great. I love it because it's great just filler. so fast. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. cool. I don't need it to be any longer than that because there's not much there. No. But it's perfect um, for. For what it is, yeah. in between games. Great. Yeah, you played New Frontiers again, huh? You uh, like that, huh? Dude, New Frontiers is. I gotta try it because oh, I, I know good. you love it. Crook loves it. I know Paula loves so it. So good. And I'm like the only one who hasn't played it. So I'm just like, man. And you guys, you keep playing it's it every month. Really it keeps game. popping up. I'm like, man, you really like this. Yeah, it's another Race for the Galaxy game, and it's uh, it's just so great. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's just, it does the the kind of Race for the Galaxy, the, the Puerto Rico stuff, where yeah. like I'm gonna choose an action, I get a better version of that action, but you get to follow that action. Yeah, yeah. And you're trying to get these planets and settle planets, which then you can produce goods on and trade them away. Um, it's really good. New Frontiers is, I just like, I'm always down, like, I will always be down to play it. And yeah. you can play that game also very fast. Really? The game we played on, on this month was actually a more drawn out one, which got really interesting in its own way. But we've, we've been playing a series of games that are like 20 minutes. Just really? Like, just getting it done. So wow. quick. Yeah, because right, there's cool. all these different ways the games will end. Um, it's so fun. It's just. It's really fun. It's wow. Really fun. Okay, cool. Uh, we played number nine when we were playing Pandemic Hot Zone during Essen uh, for Z-Man. Uh, we played two quick games. We had a little bit of extra time, so we were like, oh, let's play so quick good. game number nine, which is another Z-Man game. And this is, again, such an I like interesting... It more and more every time we Me play too. It. This is an interesting so tile-like stacking game yeah. where, again, this is another game where you can play with an one person... Well, no, you, everyone needs to have a copy, but if you have a copy, you can everyone play with an infinite play. amount of people. Yeah. Basically, you're going to have tiles that are numbered and shaped like the numbers one through nine. So you have one tiles and it's shaped and like a one. Nine, really. And then two, it's shaped like a two. All this different kinds, oh, and zero too as well. Um, and so basically you're gonna have a deck of cards, you're gonna flip over a card, it's gonna have one of those 10 numbers on it, zero through nine. And then you have to put that in your little Similar area here. configuration. And essentially you're putting stuff down, you're building the base, and then you can start putting stuff on top of those ones. The rule is, is that anything you put on top of other tiles, it has to touch at least two, at tiles, least two tiles, and it can't like hang over a gap in yeah, the ground. Yeah. So you have to have, so you're basically trying to build, support. yeah, you're trying to build a good base and you're trying to build them up as high as possible following those rules. Yeah. Because at the end of the game, you're gonna score each layer of it. Everything on your ground floor, you're gonna take Nada. the number there and you're gonna times it by zero, which is zero. Everything on that first floor, it's first floor value. up, is face value. Everything on the second floor, you take the number tile, times it by two. So the higher you can build stuff, the better. And it's so hard and it's so, so puzzly and fun and so easy. Fun, it's just great. It's gonna be 20 turns, you flip over a card, everyone places it in and it's just, just really, yeah, it's a really fun, puzzly, yeah. polyominal game. I think it's incredible. It's great. 
And yeah. so unique. There's another, another game like it. It's just yeah. it's just really, great. Really, really yeah, number cool. nine is awesome. Really you played fun. a little on tour, huh? Yeah. Oh, on tour is so good. We haven't played it in a long time. I, I have know. the app, but I had never really played it. Yeah, um, I have the app too. I think I've only played it like once or twice. But then yeah, I played it uh, the other day, and it's just a really cool game where you roll in two dice, and uh, that will give you two numbers, and you basically have to fill in these cities. Uh, uh, so it might give you you might roll in a three and nine. So you're gonna fill in a city with thirty nine, and it's fill in a city with ninety three. And you're going to have these three cards out that are going to dictate where you can put it. And it might be broken up by, it has to be somewhere in the north, or it has to be somewhere in the south, or it has to be in the west, or central, or east of the U.S. is the main map. There's a Europe map as well. And really, I didn't know that. you're trying to, yeah, I think maybe it was like a, a deluxe. Really? Something. I didn't I've know never that. seen that's cool. it play by I would love a different map. map. Yeah, it was interesting. That's Europe cool. Map was was uh, more tricky, for okay, sure, which cool. is cool. Interesting. Um, and then what you're trying to do is you're ultimately going to want to build... Um, an ascending sequence of numbers that connect from city to city. You're trying to build the longest tour route yeah. you can. It always has to go up. Yeah, yeah, the number always has to go up or at least maintain. You can put the same number next to each other, but it has to, you can't, like the mind, you can't go 43 to 24 to 78. Yeah. It's like you have to keep going. You can up. go 1 to 98. It will be a wouldn't, short tour. Wouldn't suggest it. Yeah, I yeah, wouldn't suggest it, but you could. It, but you so you're could. trying to build this route, and then the more cities you get to visit, the better. And the cool thing is on each card, again, they give you regions, like somewhere yeah. in the north. Or it'll say specifically in uh, Chicago. Yeah. And if you put it in Chicago, you get to circle Chicago. Yeah. And that's going to be worth an extra point. Yeah. But also it's like... You have to then, make it fit in your... Yeah. yeah it's, so it's, it's, just, it's a very interesting game really that cool. doesn't really feel like any other Another roll rights. It's right, yeah. a very cool route building game. Yeah. yeah. And just the idea of like you get these two numbers and you have to do the, the flips of them. It's just a cool way to do it. And then the game ends once the, the country is completely... Or continent, I guess, in Europe's case... Is completely full of numbers. Yeah. And then you just you try your see longest what's the one. longest route you could possibly build, and then that'll be your point. Yeah. So it's great. very cool. Very, very cool game. We play Pagoda. Ooh. Pagoda is a great game. Great two player AEG it game. It. Uh it's a game it where you are yeah, it's so good. God Pagoda's good. One of the better two player games. There's a lot of a lot of good games in this. Like, this yeah, a lot of a lot of bangers. This one. Yeah, um, so Pagoda is a game where you're building pagodas. Pagodas are those very tall buildings you see in like Southeast Asia, Japan, places like that. And um and there, it's very, very cool kind of 3D component game, even though yeah. it doesn't really need to be, but it's very, very cool. Yeah, it's cool. And essentially, you're turning in cards. The cards will have a one of, I think, six colors on it. And then um, you're turning in cards to build, right? Purple, yellow, green, blue, red. Or is it five? Purple... I think it's five. Who Maybe knows? five. Nah, whatever. Five. No, I think, I think, you're, I think it is five. Colors I think it is five. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. you're turning cards. So if you turn in a yellow card, you can build like a yellow column. Yeah. If you turn in a red card, you can build a red column. You can only build three columns on your turn though. So you can't like build indefinitely. You only have a certain yeah. amount of cards. Yeah. But then if you're building kind of like, number nine, if you're building um, columns on the ground floor, each column you build is worth one point. But then once you build four, ooh, you can then ooh. build a floor. And you build a floor will take one card as well. And building a floor will also give you a special power, which you can then start using. So cool. But then if you start building columns on the next floor, they're each worth two points. Yeah. Then they're each worth three points, and then four points, and then it has to have a roof on it. Yeah. And that's a finished pagoda. The game ends when you build three pagodas. So you're basically trying to score as many points as you can without setting up yeah. the other player. Like the They're all building the same pagodas together. Yes. So it's like, how do I, yeah, how do I not what do you a don't bunch want to do is for you to get all the points yeah, and leave, powers? If know? I leave like four columns there, all Mike then has to do is put a, a floor on it and then start building columns for more points. And so I get a special power that like he did Yeah, so you're trying for. to like space, you're trying to like get as many points as you can without like forcing Mike to do the work himself if he wants to get that yeah. power or something like that. And it's very, very tricky, but it's very, very fun two player. It's great. It's out, it's outstanding. The only thing I will say against it is the columns themselves are very not colorblind friendly. No. And that's it's, tough. Everything else is. Yeah. I imagine but, that game, if it were to come out today, would have some Some kind of, of symbols or, or patterns something. or something like that. Because, it's tricky because they need to kind of be uniform because they do serve a... They're structural. They do yes. actually help you build up something. But it's just ones that like... Because I've tried to play with my I roommate they, who's colorblind. Yeah. He basically could play it. Yeah. About the, the cards themselves are great. Have icons on them. So those aren't a problem. Yeah. Because you can tell And same with the part. tiles themselves. And the tiles yeah. themselves. And so it's like. It's just the columns. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one it's of those things where it's like, it's just tough. It's where if thing. this ever got reprinted, I would like to see them change. Because it's like. It's a minor thing, but. My roommate would have liked the game, but he literally couldn't play it because yeah. he just couldn't tell the purples and the blues apart and stuff like yeah. that. So it was, it was right. very difficult. But Pagoda ultimately. Is great. So good. We played uh, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero uh, during our uh, convention. We played the prologue, and we actually uh, started the 
actual campaign as well, which will be yeah, we started last night. In the next yeah. uh, rapid review, so we'll, with we'll, all we'll the spoil anything. Yeah. But we played the prologue again last night, um, and this is just got me excited for a pandemic yeah. again in a way that I haven't been for some time. It's I don't think no I, I don't knock think I, against pandemic. I would say at least in terms of the you legacies, just so much of it. Yes, I would say for the legacies, this has got me. Because we've played Pandemic Legacy, had like half of Pandemic Legacy season one, but it never really grabbed me that much. Okay. This one is, though. This yeah. one is grabbing me really, it's really so hard. so cool. Because now it's set in 1962, and there's like, it's the Cold Fighting War. Fighting the commies. Like, yeah. yeah, the communists are up to something, and you're trying to like uncover what's going on. And we obviously, we, we just played the prologue, so we don't know like what's going to be uncovered, but like, it's all spies and intrigue. And so it has all this familiarity in terms of how the actions work. And then a few things that are very different. Yeah. And that very differentness, I'm like, this is so exciting. I'm so excited yeah. to play this. It's like um, so much so that when we were talking about the prologue, the prologue itself is just kind of like a game of pandemic, essentially, because it's teaching the new stuff. Yeah. And it feels like kind of like the pandemic Iberia's or Rising Tides, where it's like it's still still pandemic, but it's yeah. it's its own game. It feels like that where I'm like, this on just its own would be a great alternate version of Pandemic sure. because it's really it's just fun. Really yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you have to like assemble these teams now and so they roll around to different cities yeah. and like acquire targets. It's really cool. fun. Uh, it's all spy stuff. So Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. I'm, I'm with super it. excited with to get it. into the uh, campaign proper. Um, it's gonna be good. Man. Yeah, it's gonna oh. be real good. My lady and I played a game of Quest oh, for I've been, I've been dying to play this, it's dude. So good. Dying to play this. Here's the thing: we need to play it, and then finally play the expansion. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's been in that box unpunched forever. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those things where we're like, why didn't? Why did we I wait know. so long to yeah. play this? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, seasons or something. I know. Uh, Quest for Eldorado is a racing game ultimately by Reiner Knizia where you use deck yeah. building and you're trying to get your explorers in a two-player game. You're trying to get two explorers to Eldorado. And you're trying to hack your way through jungles. You're trying to pay your way through markets. You're trying to discard cards through gray swamps that are just randomly have no theme attached and they gave up. I don't know why. <laughs> I know, right? Such a shame. <laughs> but um, you're you're doing all these things. And it's just great because it's just like a little micro deck builder. Yeah. And you you can buy some cards and stuff. Um, a lot of cards are like one-time use and they go away. So... You're trying not to get too bloated with your deck. Um, it's just really fun. It's, it's just really a fun, fun racing game. And the map, it's all these big kind of giant hexagonal, yeah. tiles, hexagonal tiles. And so you can then arrange them in different ways. A whole yeah. bunch of different setups, which does change the game quite a bit, depending oh, yeah. on like what order the you things are in. need a lot of water stuff because there's a lot of water features this it's game. It's really, really fun. A lot of variability just in, I mean, I think it's fun just on its own, but like in yeah. terms of the setup is really, really cool. So good. Yeah, love Quest, Quest for Colorado Colorado is always great. Forever will be great. Talk about it a little bit earlier. We played Sanctum again. Yes. Sanctum is another CGE game uh, that's so cool. really, really fun. Kind of a Euro take on like a dungeon crawl type game. But basically yeah. what it is is you're making your way up to the Sanctum where like this Balrog looking thing is there. And you have to fight them. And that's what you have to do. But as you're, way, as you're going up, you're fighting all these demons. These demons, kind of like Diablo style, then turn into loot when you mm -hmm. beat them. You can equip them. And actually. then you can equip that loot onto your body. It's like new boots, a new fancy hat. Some dice mitigation. Yeah, some cool it. weapons. And a lot of it does come down. It comes out of dice mitigation and then blocking them blocking attacking hits, you. Yeah. Because you never get your health back. If you get knocked down in health, you only have 10 health. You, you, you never you get your health back, forever. and you will need it. But it's got this really cool like tech tree where as you defeat demons, you get to move these gems up this kind of tech tree, and as you move them off of these cards, yeah. these tiles, you then get access to those special abilities, and the special abilities are unique to your character. There's four different characters in the game. They all do play uh, pretty differently. I mean, yeah. all the mechanics are the different same. vibes. And then those gems, when they get to the top, those gems are what you use to equip those items that you got from killing demons. So, so cool. it's this big battle balance game because you're not going to unlock everything no. so you're like what do i unlock what do i do what stuff do i equip what stuff do i don't equip but essentially what it comes down to is all of the entire game is just you preparing for the last fight against that balrog thing and the last fight is matters. rough it is yeah. a gauntlet to get you're through. trying to get through all these different cards and you're ultimately trying to survive like that's you all survive, you're trying to do Probably you will win. Um, everyone if, wins if you survive. Everyone yes. survives, yeah. Then whoever has the most health remaining lives. Yes. So it's literally just trying to make it through this. But it's hard. It's, it's really hard. It's really hard. The big bad is just going to deal damage. Like, you're just not going to be able to take it. So you need to go in really like the first one, you're prepared. like, oh, I have 12 damage I need to block. I only have 10 total. Yeah. Now, granted, so... you have a lot of blocking, but it's like once you use that blocking, that blocking goes away. Yeah. So the next time when he's dealing six he's damage, beat down. it's tough. <laughs> and it's just, it's literally just the entire game is you 
prepping for this final fight. Yeah. And some people say like the final fight is anticlimactic. I so disagree. I think, I think it's, it's really fun. Because just I like well, the last time we played just now is the first time I've survived it. Yeah. So I was like, that was not anticlimactic. I've never made it to the end of yeah. that game. I think it's super fun. I felt like that was pretty epic. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a game that I, I would love to see them expand someday because I think new characters and new loot and stuff like that will be would needed. Be, yeah, I think yeah, I, I think, think it will be needed, a, but limited. Really fun game. Yeah, yeah, in that way. Uh, we played Tammany Hall, which is uh, was our final pan it was our final stream of the the whole convention. Con, actually, yeah. it was our final Pandasaurus game. They they're bringing it back. Tammany Hall is an area control game that is um, uh, lives within real American history. Yeah, history. Yeah. Uh, really, and it's about trying to like basically settle set, settle 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 the uh, the boroughs of New York and yeah. stuff with immigrant populations to then basically. Make sure that you have favor with all the different types of people, and so make you can sure win that you an can election. stay in office. You're trying to win elections. You go through four elections. You're trying to be mayor, um, uh, and it was really interesting. We played a three-player game. It's it's three to five players, and it probably would be better on the four or five yeah, player I think so. end of things. Um, but it was really interesting. It's ultimately very simple. Yeah, you can either put these two ward bosses out, and you're trying to get different control of different wards. Um, and then, or you can put one ward boss and then add a cube, which will represent uh, either Irish, Italian, German, or English immigrants, two different areas, and you can get influence tokens over those people. Uh, and then elections happen. You can use those influence tokens to try to win different wards. Whoever wins the most wards will ultimately become mayor because they control most of the city. Um, and then the, the thing that was interesting was once you become mayor, if yeah. you become mayor, you're going to get three points, which is a big swing of points. And then you have to appoint roles to everyone else. You give them a job. One person might be chief of police or this person might be that. And they all will come with these interesting powers. Like one, every turn you just get three influence tokens. Yeah. And, or no, no, or no, one, one turn, but yeah, you get yeah. three over the course of a, yeah. before the election. And so it's like, you just gain that. Or you can do it. We can move the cubes around or you can take cubes off the board um, and that got very interesting, yeah. but ultimately, it's not our kind of game. No, and it's. I'm it's, glad we played it though. Here's the thing: I like area control games. I was interested in the game, and when I was reading the rules, I was like, "Oh, this actually seems pretty interesting." My main thing is, I, I think, I think you need to play it at four or five. Yeah, I think with three, it's, it's too game. open. It's, yeah. Um, because the map ultimately it scales a little bit because certain certain zones don't open till yeah. later. But like, that was smart. Yeah, but in the end, like, because I was, I didn't have a very good first round, so I was. Very, very much in last, and it was literally one of you those came things. Roaring back, I up. did. I think I did end up getting. I did end up getting relatively close in the end, yeah. but it felt the entire time like I was like, "Wow, why am I even playing?" Because I am so far behind. Because the thing is, also, if you win a bunch of stuff, you then get a lot more political favors. So, like, yeah, that Mike yeah. and our friend Shay, who's playing with us, had yeah, literally like triple the amount of political favors I I did. And I was like, I can't win any elections if I don't have any political favors. And I ended up coming back because the last round, you two were fighting a lot. Yeah, Nick's already And I was kind of just like, well, I'm just going to go here and do this. So I ended up being relatively close, but I it, it felt they like had a very bad, if you are not, if you get behind it all, you cannot catch up. And I think that might be specific to three players, more so than four or yeah, five. Yeah, maybe. But nonetheless, it was fine. I'd play it again. Um, I'm not really into those kind of games anyway, but it was just like, it was fine. Yeah, I'd play it again. Um, probably we don't need to own it. No. But like, I would play it again. It was interesting. And then once people got those powers, and a five-player game would be really interesting. Yes. Ev all the powers will be in play. Yes. We we're playing a three-player game, so two of the powers weren't in play. That became very interesting. Yeah. I was like, this is cool. And then it's a very simple game. It's very simple. Um, in terms of what you can do. In yeah. terms of what you can do. Uh, so, yeah. It's just not our type of game. No. And then also it just kind of makes you feel a little icky because you're just like, oh, yeah. This is this is weak sauce. And we live in a time where like a lot of the things that would happen during, politically Still in those happens. times are absolutely happening today. <laughs> yeah. Go vote. Uh, participate. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I'm like, oh, this sucks. Like, yeah. but... <laughs> And they, they're, like, they're like, they're like, yeah, this is a crappy time in history. Like, yeah, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's like, I played the end, but it's like, it's just not our kind of game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we played. Or, uh, do, I'm, I'm curious of how many how many times Teo Tupacan has showed up. It's in our every reviews. month. Dude, I think it's I every know. single month. The thing is, it's so easy to play on Board Game Arena that at some point in the month, I'm gonna play. <laughs> so Fair. I've talked about it every month. We've done rapid reviews because I play it every month. Uh, it's sure. one of my favorite games. Teo Tupacan. Uh, it continues to be incredibly good. It's so good. It's good. It's great. It's awesome. So good. Tattoo and Con's great. It's on Board Game Arena. Love you can so play it in like 
40 minutes. It's yeah, it's, it's, dude, if that, yeah, it's fast. fast on 40 minutes. Shout out to Nick, someone told me to go play on Board Game Arena. You started this. Yeah, I did. I did. It's 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 quick. It's very quick so, on Board Game Arena. such a fantastic We game. played a little bit of Tiny Towns. I haven't played Tiny Towns in a Hadn't yet. played Tiny Towns. We actually just got the expansion so of Tiny Towns, so I'm really games. excited to play the expansions. But Tiny Towns is great. Tiny Towns is another game where it's not like a roll and rub. You can, play, you can have someone run the game. And an infinite amount of people can play. Yeah, you because you can literally, like you could just draw a grid and draw stuff. I mean, you could you could basically roll and write it for yourself. Yes, basically. And so we tend to play Tiny Towns with the chat a decent amount. We just haven't played in a little while, so we played with the chat, and it was great. Uh, Tiny Towns is a game where you are, are getting resources: brick, wood, stone, wheat, um, and glass. Glass. And, and you essentially are putting those the, your cubes in the normal game, the resources into the, your little grid. And then you're trying to make patterns, essentially. So if you have yeah. like a glass, a wheat, and a stone or a brick or wood, whatever it is, and in this kind of L shape pattern, building. you can make a cottage. You pull up those resources and you put a cottage down in one of the spaces the resources took. And Great. And that building will forever take up that space. Yeah, and you can't put anything else. You can't put resource on top of it. And you're essentially trying to get these buildings. The buildings want to be in different spots on the board. They want to be next to different stuff, depending on what buildings you're playing with. Yeah. And there are uh, there's like four different... Um, buildings for each building type. So you have a lot of variation. Oh, yeah. And then depending on what you're playing with, you're just trying to get your stuff and trying to build the best little tiny town. But the problem is, as you build more buildings, your town starts getting small. You have less and less and less space. Less, and it gets less really difficult. The you need and stuff. It's very hard. Very, very hard, <laughs> but really, really fun, really crunchy for ultimately a pretty simple game of just yeah. trying to build the most efficient it's little city you can. Yeah, and I'm really excited for the expansion because I think it's going to add a little bit to it, which will be really fun. Um, yeah. And yeah, Tiny Towns is great. It's awesome. It's fun. It rips. The last game we played um, on our list, not the last game of the month, but we played Yukon Airways. It's been a bit. It's been a bit. We played it. Still um, great. It's really cool. It's it's a really fun game. Um, I we, we, last time we streamed it, uh, the designer came in chat. We're kind of like, you can make an expansion. He's kind of like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but um, I would love to see an expansion to see more stuff. But this is a game where you are trying to fly people around, basically the Yukon, Yukon yeah. and show them stuff. Uh, and so there's you're going to be drafting dice in the first part of the round. Uh, and there's all these rules about how you can draft. You can only get the same. You can only get one color. There's all these rules about it. Uh, and you get them people, then people's onto your plane, and you're trying to fly them to different cities and stuff using the amount of fuel, the available fuel you have. Um, and if you can match uh, the pink dice to the pink cube at this city, you're going to get money, which is your points. You're going to get the ability to do these upgrades, and the upgrades are where the game yeah, comes to life. Yeah. So you have oh, yeah. all these different upgrades you can do. It's all about the upgrades. You can have yeah. all these dials, which will give you more cards every uh, more round, fuel. Which, which dictate yeah. where you go. They'll give you more fuel so you can fly farther. Uh, you can uh, have ways to get bonus fuel mid-round so that you can stretch your round even further. And then there's all these switches that will basically allow you to start breaking rules. Yeah. Because at the, at the beginning, it's like you only take one color dice. It's like you can flip that switch. And then for the rest of the game, it's like you can get two different color dice. Yeah. So you can mix it up. Or uh, you can get this upgrade for two cards instead of three. You can make stuff cheaper for yourself. And it's all about like, how do I get these upgrades? What ways do I want to break the rules for myself? Uh, to be able to fly as many people as many different places as you can. And it's just really fun. I just love that idea. Castell does that. This game feels Castellish in in a couple of ways. Yeah. Not not as heavy as Castell or anything, but Yeah, and they don't play similarly, but in terms no, of like, but you have these rules and you can break them. And you're trying to ultimately get to a lot of different yeah. places and stuff. It's just a cool game. It's a great game. Yeah. 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 Kind of it's beautiful. It's got I, a great look to it. It's I think awesome. It's the, such a unique theme. Best cover in board games. I really do. It might be. It's one of the most striking, yeah. just beautiful covers. It's of, gorgeous. Of a board it's a game gorgeous game. And, but by doing it simply. Anyway, yeah. That is the 41 my... games we played this. We put Donkey Vault in it, but because we know the game is perfect, we designed it, but we haven't yes. actually played Donkey That's Vault. true. Yeah. But so I know it's, it's kind great. of 42 games almost. Yeah. 41 and a half games. Yeah. There you go. Um, so 41 and a half games this month. Uh, really, really good month for gaming. Essen was awesome. We got to play a lot of games during Essen. Got to play a lot of new stuff during Essen, which is great. Yeah. Really great month in terms like we didn't really play. Anything like bad, which was always nice. You no. know, it's like we pretty much enjoyed everything. Everything was at least fine. It was super, super cool. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for being for rapid reviews. Last thing we do during our rapid reviews is we always shout out the new patrons we got in the last month. We actually got a lot in the last month. We also got a lot of increases this month. So thank you so, thank so, you much so much for that. Everybody. We got a cool new goal coming out because we hit our last goal, which is for us to get a bus stop ad. Yep. So we're in the process of trying to figure out how you do that. 
So our next one, Mike, you want to tell them about that? So it's going to be uh, if we can get to a thousand dollars a month on our Patreon, and we are at nine and change, nine hundred dollars and change. If we can get to a thousand, what we're going to do is we're going to do a ring in, a bing in the bong year or something. We're Ooh, gonna, bing. We're going to do a New Year's Eve uh, marathon stream slash weekend of gaming with everybody. So yeah. the way it's going to work is on New Year's Eve, starting at noon our time, West Coast time. Uh, we're going to start doing a live stream. It's going to be a 12-hour live 12, stream. 12, 13 hours, somewhere this. in there, it's yeah. It's going to be another Bing Bong Con. Um, and we're going to ring in the new year. Uh, so we'll go until midnight our time. I think at 9 o'clock, we'll do a little celebration for our East Coasters. We'll yeah, do it that's at a good 10 idea. o'clock, something for our, oh, for that's our a good Midwest idea. folks. Yeah, and then, you know, yeah, yeah. And then we'll go till the new year our time. And then that's the next two idea. days, which will be a Friday and Saturday, the first and second of the new year, we're going to be organizing and playing games digitally with people uh, over board game arena through and our discord and it all be done through our discord all through our that, discord yeah. so that's going to be a thing if we can get to a thousand by the end of the year yeah so if so. you've always thought like i like those murphs i'd like to i got a them. dollar you can help all of our goals on patreon are um community goals we don't do anything where like if you're this tier uh you get, you get all, access this, extra to all stuff. this stuff that no no we don't we do, do that. small little things where basically you get to vote on some um, things but we are much more about like let's do community goals if we can raise this much collectively then we all get this cool thing yeah. because even a dollar helps. So yeah, consider does. checking out our Patreon. So new patrons this new patrons. month. Thank you so, so much to Chaz Murphy. Brother Chaz, we appreciate you. Our brother. <laughs> we got T-Mart. Thank you so much, T-Mart. T-Mart. T-Mart, you're great. We got Phil Johnson. We got Nick, spelled N-I-K. So we just decided we're mortal enemies. We got Aaron Trahane. We got Kenny. We got Nez. We got yeah. Elsie Soros. Yeah. We got Kyle Weeks. We got Eliani. And this last person. Yeah. This last person here, we always offer people uh, nickname. nicknames if just in case want. they don't want to. Like T Mart is a nickname, so we just in case people don't want, they want to give anonymously, but they still want a shout out. Yeah. We offer them, you know, a um, a nickname, something like yeah. that. And this person said, "Do your worst for a nickname. Do whatever you want," which was a bad idea. All right, give it to us. So we would like to give a special shout out to Prince. Favin Winkle, Earl of Lawn Mowers, father to a seven-headed goose, son of an itch that won't go away, Lord of Foghorn Leghorn Impressionists, and Nobel Peace Prize recipient who slew the neighbor's pesky gopher infestation. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to that for person. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, you can ask for nicknames on our Patreon. You can play games with us on our Patreon. You can do a bunch of stuff. Cool. You can help create uh, these community goals that we've uh, we've burned through a bunch of them. And a few of them are coming and would be here if not for the fact that we can't go outside and do stuff. Yeah. So those are coming soon. At some point, yeah. Some year. But thank you so much, Patrons. Really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate everyone. You all are wonderful. Thank and thank you so, much, you so, much, so much. And that's going to be it for our rapid reviews. Thank you so, so much uh, for being here. And uh, we'll see you later. We'll see you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for checking out our Patreon. Cheer. Wait, our Rapid Reviews. I'm still on the Patreon. <laughs> also, thanks mode. for checking out Patreon, dude. If you want to see our last Rapid Reviews, you can check it out right there. And if you want to go down here, you'll see our best bang for your buck games. If you hear us talking about these games now you want them, find out which ones we think are Some really good. Some of them showed up on this list. Yeah. Some of them showed up on this list. Indeed. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. And give this video a thumbs up. Thanks. Bye, everybody.